Hi guys, it's Tim with Inflatable Office and Event Office, and I want to show you how you can do some stuff to kind of get a customer to finish a checkout and make sure that you don't have any equipment reserved that shouldn't be reserved, just in case the customer never finishes. So let me share my screen here with you. And there's a couple of ways now to set up your system in Inflatable Office. I'm going to take you to the statuses because that's what we're going to talk about here. Our default when we do this is that the checkout process starts with a quote as they, if they indicate that they want to book the event, we present them a contract. We move it into a contracted status. And at that point, we also reserve the items. Now, some people have said this is not a great way to do it because they want first come first serve. Now in those people, what you're going to do is you're going to click on this and you're going to say, I don't want to reserve equipment in here. I want to present them the contract, but I don't want the equipment reserved and um, we will not reserve it until, I'm not gonna save that, until they get to like a confirmed status, which uh, a lot of times what they do for confirmed status is, is say that it has to have a deposit paid or a contract signed or even both like this one set up. So if you're gonna make a change like that and you've been in business a while and you have leads in, in the contracted status, just remember once you mark that as not being reserved, any of those leads uh, could be taken by somebody else, any of those products on those leads. So if there's a few of those leads that you uh, had kind of committed to, you need to go in and manually move those leads to confirmed. Um, in this case, though, we're going to talk about using our default statuses. And instead of doing like a first come first serve like that, we're going to set up a time period like 48 hours where we reserve the equipment. And then if they don't come through and, and, and actually make a payment or sign a contract, whatever it is that means um, they're good for you, uh, we're going to we're going to do is we're going to downgrade their status. During that process, we're also going to market to them or or sell to them and try to get them to, to complete it uh, by creating a little bit of urgency. So uh, these statuses are set up the way we want them right now. So the first thing that we're going to want to do here is we're going to actually go into our automations because in our automations is where we're going to be setting up these tasks to do some of these things. So I'm going to name this revert status one. Uh, you could name it whatever you want. I'm not going to make it active yet. Uh, first thing I see here is filters. This is important and we're going to have to make a filter to catch all of the leads that we want this automation to apply to. Uh, and we're going to get to that in a minute. So what I'm going to do with this revert status one is I'm going to say after 24 hours of getting into that contract status, if they haven't moved out of that to confirmed yet, what I want to do is I want to send them an email and I want to tell them that, hey, uh, I, I need to make sure that you're serious. So obviously you wouldn't put this in here like this, but this is what we're doing effectively, right? So we wanna say, are you serious about this? You better book now. And we're gonna put in our variable for the URL to the lead so that they uh, can go ahead and click on it and, and go forward with it. Um, and, and some cases we could, I think we, we could even put at this point, the contract one would probably be more appropriate because they've already clicked the book and they have a contract that's been generated. Um, and you'd probably wanna put something like, um, your equipment will be released in 24 more hours. So after 24 hours, if they haven't done it, we're going to send this to them saying, hey, you only got 24 more hours uh, before we uh, take care of this. So I'm going to call this act now for the subject uh, and save it. And you don't have to build the template right there. You can actually build the template um, inside of uh, our email templates area and then just select it from the list. That's what I prefer to do. Uh, but showing you here today, I'm, I just decided to do it that way. We can also do other things with this. We could also send a text if we wanted. We could say, okay, I want to send a text to them as well. Uh, and, uh, and it would be probably something similar. You know, act now and, you know, contract URL. Just to be a little quick for the video. Uh, so we do something like that and it will you know text to the customer's cell phone number so we can send them both we could send one or the other it doesn't matter what we do there um, so let's let's go and get our filter set up so we can come back here and set up the filter right so we're going to go to our filters uh, now up until this point we've always had you uh, and i'm going to name this the same so i really know my intent is to use it for that automation 
um, up until this point, we've always said to use the create date, uh, but we have a new field here, and I think it's even more appropriate, and we kind of build it for this, um, the status change date and time. So um, we want to know if they've gone up to contract status. Once they hit contract status, um, we're going to start the clock, start the timer. So if that's been 24 hours, and they since that went up to contract status, um, we want to know about it, and we want to send this to automation. So the other thing we need to put in is what status we're looking at. Okay, so once we do that, and we can see down here, we don't have any in this demo account that are affected by this, but that's the status. That's what we want to do there. That's going to catch them all for us uh, and make sure that we, you know, send those out. So I'm going to save that. Uh, we're going to go back in here. Oops, my mistake. We're going to go to automations and back into here. And now we're going to select our status that we wanted. So that's enough to get the automation going. At that point, I would make that active. I'm not going to do that right now. So the next one we want to do is uh, where we actually change the status. So we're going to call this revert status two. And yeah, you could probably name these better. So um, we're going to send another email. Uh, again, we could do a text if we wanted. Uh, I'm going to create a new one here. Um, your equipment is not reserved. So making a good subject to get them to open it. And again, we would do the same sort of thing. You know, it's not reserved because you didn't pay the deposit. Now, um, we can still put the contract URL in here. Uh, well, let's see, I don't think we'd be able to, we actually have to put the quote URL in now because what we're gonna do is we're gonna downgrade this to a lower status, meaning the contract is no longer valid. Okay, so they'll have to go back through the quote URL, click the book button, and pay. So if they still want to do it, they're going to have to click book now and pay. And so uh, that that's probably you know a reasonable message to send to them. So we've got our email. Uh, the next thing we're going to do here is we're actually going to change the status of it. So we're going to change it from contracted down to quote. So we're going to downgrade their status when this happens. They'll send get the email telling them that they no longer have their stuff held and the status of the quote will go down so they truly will not have it held anymore. Um, and if they decide to go through and click on the quote URL and, and book again, uh, that'll put them back into the queue for getting the revert status one message if they don't pay. But if they pay and go through with it, um, we're good to go. So, uh, and you could do more than two emails here or text messages. You could do uh, as many as you want with whatever filters you want to set up. So I'm going to come back over here to filters and I'm going to make another one. I'm going to call this reverse status two. It's helpful for me to do that just to know what it is I was using it for. Uh, and again, we're going to come in here and say we're going to last 48. So now once we hit the 48 hour mark, probably in the, um, yeah, I was going to, I was going to say it's probably good for us to let them know it's 48 hours, but I think we said in the 24 hour one that they only have 24 hours. So uh, that was obvious. Uh, so we're again looking at stuff in the contract status still that hasn't been, you know, so it hasn't been booked because it's still in the status. They haven't made a payment and hasn't moved up uh, and it's been over 48 hours or at least 48 hours. Um, and that's, so that's going to catch everything we want. Uh, and a good way to do that is to kind of look and see um, if, it, if it highlights some things here, you can take a look at them, make sure that what it's highlighting are things that it should be catching. Uh, in this case, um, I don't have any, this is a demo account, doesn't have anything that really matches that, but you'll probably have something. Uh, just to, to bring something to your attention here, you can see how this has a checkbox, this one doesn't, um, because the only thing we allow here is deleting of filters. Um, once a filter is in use, we don't allow you to delete it. You have to first get rid of its use, and then you can come in here and delete it. So this one's not in use yet. I could delete it. This one I can't. So just to let you know that, it's just a quick little bit of information. We're going to come back here to revert status. And if you know what you're doing, you don't have to uh, do the filter second. You can do the filter first. So when you come in here, um, you know, you can set it up the way you need to. Uh, and from the start, but uh, sometimes it helps me to think about the automation first and then figure out what filter I want. So uh, there you go. 
Uh, that's how you do it. Uh, and now what will happen here is if someone gets a, a quote and says, uh, yeah, you know, I do want to, I would do want to book this and they get presented a contract and they have the option to pay and they don't do it. Um, we're going to send them this after, after 24 hours, we're going to send a text and an email. It's going to say you have 24 hours before your stuff's going to be released. Uh, hopefully that'll get them to click that link and they will go forward with it. If not, they're going to get one at 48 hours. And it's going to say, yes, indeed, we did release your stuff. We've moved that lead back down to quote, uh, and it's no longer reserved. Uh, we also are putting that link in there in case they want to go ahead and click that and, and make the reservation. Probably not a bad idea to put your phone number in so that you can contact us as well. If this is uh, a mistake uh, or if you want to try to reserve over the phone. So uh, that's how it works. Uh, I hope that's helpful. I think this is a really good way to create some pressure. Uh, with your sales. Uh, I think it's probably better than a first come first serve situation. Um, it, it does require a little more work on your part setting it up, but it enables you to kind of um, show people that you're busy, uh, that you care about them and you're trying to reserve their stuff, but you just can't hold it forever because uh, you're so busy and so popular. Uh, and so hopefully that'll get them to go ahead and, and pull the trigger and you'll make an additional sale. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed it. We'll, we'll talk to you later.